Color Run. Today, we're taking a look at a highly requested video, Guided Product Selection in Revenue Cloud. So what is Guided Product Selection? Guided Product Selection will allow you to create a set of targeted questions that will filter the catalog results that you see in the Browse Catalogs page for products. It will let you create those questions. The user will then fill in, answer those questions, and based on the results, filter down the available products to be selected and added to a quilt. A couple setup steps that we will go through today to set that up. So first thing, although optional, you can install the Omnio St Studio package. So this guided product selection can be enabled either with or without the package. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to do it without the package. But if you already have the package and you want to leverage that, you can. Then we'll enable the discovery framework in Revenue Cloud. We'll set up the indexed data for products. And then we'll enable guided product selection. We'll create our assessment question category if needed or use the out-of-the-box ones. Then we'll deploy the standard OmniScript that's required for this. We'll create our questions, create our forms, and finally we'll create and activate our OmniScript for the uh, guided product selection questions. And finally, we'll test that out in uh, against a quote. So let's go ahead and jump into Salesforce. So in Salesforce, first thing we'll want to do is add into setup. So I'll go ahead, click setup. First thing we do want to we want to enable is the discovery framework. So you can look for discovery framework in the setup search, and then you'll want to add into general settings, and you want to turn on discovery framework. So first step, you will get a warning. That once it's enabled, it cannot be disabled. So go ahead and enable that. You will get a few more options on here that are enabled. So a couple of things that you're going to want to do here is turn off enhance questions. Go ahead and disable, and then turn on import or export. Again, enable that. There we go. Next, you're going to go into product discovery setting. Still in setup, so search for product discovery settings. In product discovery settings. You can scroll down a couple things here we're going to need to do at this point. So before we can turn on guided product selection, we need to turn on the use of index data for product listing and search. So first thing, if you have product field search enabled, you're going to want to disable that. And then before you can actually go ahead and enable the use of index data, you'll need to go in and create a full index of your products. So as I click on create the full index, a couple things I want to do before I go ahead and create my full index so that those new fields are considered for search. So I've already created a couple of fields on my product that I want to be able to use for my guided product selections. So you're going to want to use on the index page, go to the manage fields and attributes tab, and you're going to want to edit the manage field and attributes to select the additional products that you want to consider for guided product selection. So the fields that I do want to use, and you can see by field type, I want to use custom fields for this. So I've got use case, I want to set to searchable and filterable. I have uh, requires clean room rating, so I'll set the filterable as well. I have payload capacity, I'll set, set the searchable. And finally, I have deployment environment that I'll set to both filterable and searchable. And I'll hit next. You can define the order that those fields are going to appear uh, for filtering if required. I'll leave those as is and I'll hit save. Now that this is done, I can go back to my indexes tab on the index page and I go, I'll go ahead and create the full index. If you've already created the full index, want to make sure that you're going to do a full index rebuild once you've modified those managed fields and attribute, or you run the risk that this is not going to run as expected when you get to running the guided product selection. Now this will take a couple of minutes to run depending on catalog size. So we'll leave it as that. And once the status is complete, we can keep going in our setup of guided product selections. While this is running, a couple other steps that we can take care of instead of waiting. So we'll go back to setup and in setup, you'll go into the object manager and you want to go into the assessment questions object on the assessment question. As you're creating those, there is a field called category that you can leverage for this. You will have access to a couple out of the box categories in there, demographic and financial. But if you want to create a new category pick list for this, so make sure you go ahead and do that before you go in and create your assessment questions. So we'll create this and we'll go ahead and create a new category for robots because our questions will be centered around robot use cases and our products are robots. So we'll use that for our assessment question uh, pick list value when we do get to assessment questions. Once this is done, you can check back on your index. Uh, in my scenario now, the index rebuild has been completed. So we can keep going with setup. So we'll add back into setup. We'll go to the home page of setup. We will 
look for product discovery settings. In product discovery settings, you should now be able to both turn on use index data for product listing and search now that you have your index built. And now we can also go ahead and turn on guided product selection. Now that this is done, we'll again go back to our setup menu, look for discovery framework, and add into general settings. You will now have a new option available within general settings called simple templates. You want to go ahead and enable simple templates, confirm that you do want to enable. And now we're going to want to deploy the sample template for a discovery framework. So you'll hit the link that's now available within that section, discovery framework, sample template page. And you should see a template called guided product selection. You want to go ahead and hit deploy for this one. Confirm that you want to go ahead and deploy. Again, deployment will take a minute or two to run. And once it's fully deployed, you can hit refresh. Deployment status is complete. And we can keep going with our setup of guided product selection. Now that this template is deployed, you should have access to a new OmniScript in your environment. So hit the standard menu, not the setup menu. Look for OmniScripts under the OmniScripts object. Click to see all OmniScripts or whichever list makes it easier for you to find this one. And you should have that product guided selection integration OmniScript created. Click through that one. Nothing to modify within the product guided selection integration OmniScript, you're simply going to want to go ahead and enable this, activate that OmniScript so it's available. So I'll go ahead and hit activate. Our OmniScript is now active. Nothing else to change on this one. Now at this point, you will want to add back into the product catalog management app of your Salesforce environment. And we're going to start to build questions for our guided product selection setup. So we'll be creating questions that are going to answer questions. Uh, so we'll be creating questions that will return answers that match the different fields that we said we had set up on our object earlier. So we'll click into assessment questions and you want to go ahead and start to create new questions. So we'll create a new question. So we have four questions that we want to set up in our guided product selection. The first one is going to be for our use case. So you can give a name to your assessment question, set the developer name as well, call it use case data type in this one will be select. Category, again, we've created categories earlier, so you can go ahead and select your new category or whichever category you've, uh, you you want to use for this one, and you can hit save on your assessment question. Now, for every question, you're going to create an header, a header assessment question, and you'll create child and assessment question version, so you can create multiple versions of your questions. We'll go ahead and create ours for the use case. So again, this is going to be our use case. And then what's the actual question text that you want to ask for that in the guided product selection page? So we'll ask, what is the use case for this product or for this robot rather? Then you can add the description if you want. You can add an help text that's going to show to your users. We can set it to active. And then you can add the response values that should match your pick list for your object. So I'll go ahead and grab the pick list values that are available for that field on my product record. Logistics, assembly, welding, and inspection. Go ahead and hit save. So that's now my assessment question version. So we'll go back to our own page and we'll go through this, create, um, sorry, create all our assessment questions. So again, I'll hit new. We'll create one now for whether it requires clean room rating or not. Use that for a dev name as well, but no spaces. So you can use underscores. Data type for this one will be a checkbox. It's simply a true false category. We'll add into robots as well. No related question for now. So related question will allow you to create a parent-child relationship into your question, right? So questions that are dependent on another. Again, you always need to create a new assessment question version for every one of your questions. So it requires clean room rating. Does the robot require clean room rating, right? And this is simply yes, no. So we can set that to active. And again, save on our new active question. And we'll go through this for our four different questions that we've got to match uh, against our product right now. Next one will be the deployment environment for the robot. So we'll call this deployment environment. Again, we can use the same thing for a dev name, deployment environment. There we go. No spaces, but you can use underscores. Data type for deployment environment is again select because it's a pick list. We'll use robots for a category. And we'll go in and create our assessment question version for this as well, where you want to take your pick list values for the response values, one per line, 
and then here we'll also do this is the deployment environment and then we'll say where will the robot be deployed right that's going to be our question we want to make sure we set this to active and it's save and finally our last question will be the payload capacity for the robot so we'll create a new assessment question this one will be payload capacity again we can copy the name for dev name underscore feel free to skip ahead if you've seen enough questions to the next step which will be creating the form for our guided product selection data type for this will be an integer because it's a number of value that we expect from the customer from the user category will still be robots although this time we will set up a related question right so we'll we'll set that to be defined to be dependent on use case so we only want to set the payload capacity in specific use cases so if it's used for assembly that's where payload capacity is relevant so we'll go ahead and hit save again we will create our assessment question version so payload capacity what is the typical payload for this robot that's it active no response values because that will be a number of values so we've got all of our questions created now so we want to go ahead and create the form for this at this point so we'll add into our own page of the product catalog management app again. You'll search for the create form option within that menu. So like create form, guided product selection is the usage type for that form. Hit save. You can give a name to your Omni script. So we'll call it guided selling language. You can define to multi-language, any language you want, or we'll select English for this one. In type, you might only see one option. That's what I've been seeing in my environments for contracts, but you can go ahead and type into that value guided selling for type. And then in subtype, you'll again only see some options that are related to contracts, but you can type in and set this to product selection and that should work for you. Now you want to add the different questions in your, uh, in your guided selling form down here. So you can search for your assessment questions or you can select a specific category. So we'll go ahead and select robots that should show us the different questions that we've got available. At this point, as you can see, we only have three questions out of four, but we do see that that top question there, there as a related question. So we'll see it further down in the process. You can define your steps for guided selling. So we'll call this step one. And once this is all built out, you can hit build OmniScript top right to create the OmniScript for your guided product selection. This is gonna get created. And right away, you'll see your step one, which has all the different questions. Now you see that the four questions are now, are, are now available here, right? So we see use case, typical payload, does it require rating, uh, clean room rating, where will it be deployed? So all the questions that we had set up are now available on here on our form. What we can do for the payload question, which is dependent on our use case, is we can only we can define it so that it only shows up in relevant scenarios. So if, for example, we want to say, so if I click on the use case for a robot, we see all the available options. And if we're saying that we only need the payload if the use case is assembly, then we can go ahead and click on the payload question. You can define on the right hand side conditional view, show element if true. And then if you click on show element if true, you're going to be able to build out a set of questions. So what we want to set up here is to say if the use case is equal to assembly then that question should show and then it's not going to show unless this is true as you're building your omni script for this make sure that your step or all the steps that you're going to build in there you're going to go ahead and uncheck allow save for later you it doesn't support saving partial forms so you can you have to go all the way you will also remove the save remote action that's at the bottom by default there so you can remove that and then the final step will be to add the product guided selection integration omniscript step and this needs to be the last step of your omniscript so make sure that this gets added on there and now that this is saved you can act you can either activate and go ahead and test it out or we can hit preview to confirm that this is working as expected this is showing up right everything is empty if i set this to logistics nothing else shows up if i set this to assembly now i can enter the payload for my robot and so I can set a value, I can check the values, and finally, where will the robot be deployed? Indoor, outdoor, clean room, and that's it. So we confirm that this is working as expected. Now we can go back to design, and we can go ahead and activate our Omniscript.
now that your OmniScript is active, this is ready to be tested against a quote in your environment. So you can move out of your OmniScript page, go back to any of your Salesforce pages. We'll go in and create a quote. So we'll create a new quote to test that out. So fill in all the required fields that are required in your environment. We'll call this guided selection demo. Uh, we'll define a quote for this as well. Define an account rather on our quote, currency, legal entities as required, right? And finally, you can hit save on your quote and it's created. We will be able to test this once we go into the browse catalogs, right? So on your quote, on your quote, top right, right? You're going to want to go into browse catalogs, select your price book if a price book needs to be selected on your quote. Now, by default, we're going to see all the products that are currently qualified. But one thing that you will now see on your catalog page now that the guided product selection is enabled is top right. You should be able to see the guide me option there. Now that option can be either shown or hidden on your browse catalog page. So you do control that if you have a custom flow for your browse catalog. So let's take a quick jump into a browse catalog option, right? So if you've got a custom flow for your discover product discovery, there is an option on the product list page container called show guided product selection. It, it, it defaults to true, but you could set it to false, or you could also go further and create a formula that sets it to either false or true, depending on the catalog that the, the user is into, right? So maybe you want guided product selection in some catalogs, but you don't in others. If that's the case, then you can go a bit further and customize that. This is a standard flow screen, right? So you can go ahead and create whatever you need on this. Set back into our quote. So if we want to test our guided product selection, we can go ahead and hit guide me. This will show me the available guided selling options. So I select my guided selling form and I hit start. This is going to show me the questions that are available within my guided selling form that we just created a minute ago, right? So again, if we set the use case for our robot, if we set it to logistics, we don't see the additional question. If I set it to assembly, now we get an extra question about the typical payload for my robot. You're going to want to go and enter, enter in your answers. Now these are going to get filtered against your product field, right? So a limit that you might encounter if you use a number of field, for example, is not it's not using greater than or equals or any conditions, right? It's matching against specific values. So make sure you design this correctly so it makes sense to users. Um, does it require clean room rating? Yes, no. And finally, where will it be deployed? A clean room. So now once I hit next, what this will do is it's going to filter my products and the field values for those products against the answers that have been given given by the user. So depending if I have a product that does match, once I hit next, we're going to get it available, right? So I do have a product that matches those entries. We see the answers that were provided in the guided selling, right? So these are the recommended products from guided selling based on the answers that I've given. If I wanted to restart, I can still hit guide me, go back into my form, hit start again. And at this point, I could provide a different set of answers, right? So if I go ahead and say it's for inspections, the robot will be deployed outdoor. It does not require clean room rating. I hit next. And now I get a different robot that's available for selection. And then at this point, the flow is similar, right? I'm going to hit add, save quote. My product is added to my quote. And that's how you leverage guided selling in Salesforce Revenue Cloud. As usual, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, please reach out. Let me know if you've got questions. This one was highly requested, so that's why I went ahead and did that video. So if you've got suggestions or questions or stuff that you'd like to see, please reach out. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.